IHL has failed Jackson State. IHL has failed Jackson State in that it has, has selected three leaders who did not succeed. Jackson State University alumni, now lawmakers, are asking the College Board for consistency after soon-to-be former President Thomas Hudson stepped down as the university's president Tuesday night. But I hate to see Jackson State change leadership every three years because that's not good for the university. But I do want going forward that the IHL Board would do what it previously used to do in terms of forming a search committee. Senator Barbara Blackman believes the IHL should allow more influence from the Jackson State community when it comes to choosing leadership. In doing it that way, we might not have the kind of turnover that we've had in the past few years. Blackman has served on two search committees for a Jackson State president. She says previously the College Board would appoint individuals with input from JSU's alumni and faculty. She says that hasn't been the case. Let us get a president that will be there for a number of years like we have at the other institutions. I just hope for God's sake Asia gets it right this time because we deserve only the best at Jackson State. In Jackson, Michaela Franklin, 16 WAPT News. We reached out to the IHL for a response. Spokeswoman Carol Blanton says Board of Trustees will discuss future leadership of Jackson State at their regular board meeting. There is no information on the search for the next president. I want to turn to the weather now. We'll give you a live look outside using our South Jackson sky cam. Beautiful blue skies, though another cool day. Chief Meteorologist David Hartman joins us with Jackson's certified most accurate forecast. Beautiful, but again, below average. Three straight days. Few high thin clouds coming in, but it's going to be a nice evening. Not as cold, but still chilly tonight. Here are the current temperatures. Jackson 64, Natchez 62, Macomb 64. So it looks like everybody made it into the 60s today. We're not done with the cold weather. We got a little bit of a warm up. Tomorrow night will be warm. And look at those weekend temperatures. One, two, three mornings down in the 30s. Megan, lots to talk about. We got a lot of rain before it turns cold again, too. A lot to talk about for sure, David. Thank you. A Capaya County teacher who's charged with five counts of molestation is out of jail on bond tonight. A judge said bond at $375,000 for 61 year old David Farmer. Capaya County Sheriff Byron Swilly says deputies arrested Farmer Monday afternoon. He'd been a teacher for 16 years. Some Mississippians could lose Medicaid coverage when a pandemic provision ends at the end of this month. 16 WAPT's Ross Adams found out how many people could be impacted. Thousands of Mississippians on Medicaid now on the verge of potentially losing access to that health care safety net, according to advocates for low income families. We don't have an exact number, but we do know that because Mississippi isn't a Medicaid expansion state that uh, a lot more people are at risk of losing coverage. The reason for the potential loss of coverage, a provision of the federal government's COVID-19 pandemic public health emergency, which allowed for continuous coverage for Medicaid coverage for the past three years, will end March 31st. This is a tsunami, it's what we call it, that's happening across the country and especially in Mississippi, but we're talking about more than 800,000 recipients. Southern Regional Director for the Children's Defense Fund, Olita Garrett Fitzgerald, says the State Division of Medicaid plans to start recertifications over the next 14 months starting April 1st. Meaning the 800,000 recipients across the state from the elderly, pregnant women and children will have to prove they're still eligible. So that they don't lose coverage, uh, and particularly if they are under a doctor's care or under treatment for something uh, we have seen happen in the, in the past, that when people are dropped from coverage, uh, it affects their medical treatment. And that's why we just stress so much, and that's why it's very important that we reach people and let them know, like, hey, you need to make sure that the Division of Medicaid has your contact information and that it's updated. 